Hello family, I'm happy to be back with another session from the Newman series. Um, also this week, I'm going to pick up from where I left off last week at this whole, um, basically the last two, three sessions, including this one, are completely um, led by the Lord. And I think this would be an amazing, I don't know, I don't want to say an end to this uh, three-part teaching, but I think this is a great uh, Climax. It's an amazing thing to see because this truly brings joy to all of us. I'm going to be talking about actually uh, singing a psalm. Um, and let me just quickly uh, start. So uh, remember that I have been talking to you about putting on the new man. That was by the renewing uh, of uh, being renewed in the spirit of our mind. Last week I talked about not giving to place to the devil. Now that we know this now that we we know that we are a new man so and we looked at what does it mean not to be uh, giving place to the devil or well, we looked at first peter that says don't take cares upon yourself cast them out on the lord and uh, i said i showed you something about how do you do this uh, but i'm going to give you something very practical today and it's an amazing thing I, i've experienced this myself and this is about uh, basically singing or making melody in your heart or, uh, you know, having a hymn or uh, just songs, singing them to the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let me just say this, that uh, we looked at what Peter said last week, which was the devil that Paul said, don't give place to it. Uh, the devil uh is walking, roaming about, seeking whom he may devour. In the context, it was about keeping cares that prisons your mind. And on the contrast, Peter said, but be sober, don't cast it out, don't take it upon yourself. So that means when he says, be sober, sober, the chance is that you may be also drunk because you always use the word sober uh, opposite to being drunk. So. If not having cares is being sober, having the cares is being drunk. Or I would say being sober is not having cares. Being drunk is to keep the cares that causes your mind to be in a state of drunkenness, not conscious towards, toward the spirit anymore, right? But Paul now tells us in Ephesians all about putting on the new man, being renewed in the spirit of the mind, uh, not giving place to the devil. Just a few verses after that, in chapter 5, he says in verse uh, 18, and do not be drunk. Okay, so now what kind of drunkenness? Peter talked about this drunkenness with the cares. Uh, do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Who is being told to be filled with the Spirit? Same new man. The new man to be filled with the Spirit. It says, before you were filled with another wine, with cares, you were not sober to the Spirit. But now I want to tell you, be just as uh, the one that is drunk in the natural is so imprisoned in that drunkenness, just like the one that is uh, basically filled with cares, so imprisoned by that those cares. Now I'm telling you, be so filled with the spirit that uh, I would say that's like, uh, and basically when we put it beside what Paul is saying, he says this is a new kind of drunkenness. So he says, I want you to be so drunk in the spirit. What does that mean? That all you're imprisoned with and you're conscious of is the spirit, not anything outside of it not anything outside of the Spirit, okay? Now, I remember in the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, when the Spirit came, they began to speak in other tongues, and the result was that people that were seeing them, they said, these people are drunk. So, the, them being filled, their experience on the outside showed itself in a way that they said they are drunk. What does that mean? They saw what people uh, experience when they only drink wine. So there had, there has to be so much joy, uh, so much joy, or there had, uh, how do you say that? There should have been so much 
joy in those people that people that were watching them in the day of Pentecost, other people, uh, they said, these people must be drunk. They have drank wine. Okay, but now we realize that this drunkenness is the spirit. But how do you get filled with the spirit? That it sets you free from being drunk but by cares. How do you do that as a new creation? Well, this is what we read. Verse 9, it says, Speaking to one another in Psalms. Okay, I'm not going to go further. Let's just pause here for a moment. Speaking to one another in Psalms. Okay, <clears throat> what is a psalm? That's the first question that we must be asking. What is a psalm? I looked at the word uh, psalm in the Greek and I looked at the uh, verb form, the root word of that, and this is what it means and it's just amazing. Um, it means to pluck off, to pull out. Now, what are you plucking off? What are you pulling out? Listen, to cause to vibrate by touching, okay? To cause something to vibrate by touching or to touch the strings of a musical instrument so that they gently vibrate and also create a sound. Okay, this is the meaning of the word singing a song. Okay, now <clears throat> where is this happening? Because obviously you don't have an instrument. That's not what he's talking about. He's not saying go get a guitar and you know or do all those things because later he's going to tell us that uh, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So where is this uh, making melody happening or singing a psalm is happening? It says in your heart. If it is in your heart, there has to be an instrument inside of you. Okay, if singing a psalm um, meant to um, to cause to vibrate it by touching or if it meant to touch the strings of that musical instrument so that they gently vibrate and create a sound if that is the meaning of singing a song and Paul says do it in your heart where is or what is that instrument that you have that can be used to sing a song it is your heart okay so your heart is a uh, is an instrument with strings that can be touched that they can be gently vibrating and create a sound and what comes out of your mouth would be the result of what is happening in your heart so he says this is going to make you be filled with the spirit now what does it mean um, <clears throat> it means our heart is able to experience a new vibration a new touch in our heart can create a new vibration get, that can create a new sound and that sound would bring joy to us. It will be like, let's say you go to a concert, you go to a place that a musical instrument uh, is being played, a song is being sung, uh, and you suddenly, you, you're, you know, you, you feel different. You feel as you're suddenly free from everything else. You're in the moment. You are experiencing joy even to the point that it's not anymore inside. You suddenly, your body parts begin to vibrate, to move, and that's what we call a dance. Basically, a dancing, uh, <clears throat> a true dance comes out when not when you decide to dance a true dance when it comes out when you are in an atmosphere that there is a joyous an environment with uh, basically instruments being played and songs being sung 
and you can't help but to go with the flow just to allow that uh, vibration to touch you and suddenly you see that your hands are being moved your head is being moved your legs are being moved and people say he's dancing or she's dancing all right so we read that the new man can be in a state of dancing can be in a state of joy can be in a state of hope that it's like a drunken man or woman but this time with the spirit that means <clears throat> Previously, there was being under the another spirit called also the devil. We talked about this previously. That would bring a drunkenness. Now we have the new spirit, the Holy Spirit, that makes me also drunk. And I'm under the influence of this drunkenness. Previously, that drunkenness was caused by cares. This time is by the remembrance of the Lord. This is what why I said, your heart is that in, um, instrument with uh, strings that any touch on that can basically create uh, vibration, create sound, and you can experience joy. What does it mean? How do you do this? Let me show you. It says, <clears throat> making melody in your heart. By the way, making me melody is the verb form of song. So both the noun and the verb are in this uh, verse in verse 19 speaking to one another in psalm that's the noun making melody is the verb but making melody literally means to sing a song okay and that's where you get all that meaning of touching and creating vibration and sound verse 20 giving thanks always for all things to god the father in the name of our lord jesus christ okay giving thanks to God our Father, because we know there is one God, we know there is one Father, we know He is our Father, we are born from Him, we are uh, His fruits, we are, um, we have come basically from Him, just as Paul says, we, in Him we live, move and have our being, we are not separated from Him. But he says, did you know anything about Him without Jesus? Because people say God. But their revelation of God is limited. They know him as the creator. They know him. Sometimes even people try to, you know, get closer and they say, well, he's all about love. But they don't know. They, they haven't seen the proof of that love. They haven't seen what that love looks like. They don't have a strong, uh, basically, um, a strong revelation of that. But what happens in Jesus is that that father puts on flesh and comes here and you suddenly everything that was said in the old testament about the lord are fulfilled in that one person and paul says i'm going to explain this paul says if you do this if you go back to the old and bring all that old to the new if you go back to the old and look at the Lord and come to the new and see all of them in Jesus, suddenly that untouchable God becomes the most tangible, real person on this planet for you. So suddenly everything that was said about God as the Lord can find its meaning, its expression, its fulfillment in Jesus. That's why it says, giving thanks to God our Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Giving thanks to God our Father, but now I have a name for him. What is that name? Jesus the Christ. That means, that's what he said. Didn't he say that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father? So Paul is saying, your joy will be limited when you only talk about God. But when you take everything that was about God and you sing them to Jesus. But yet you know you're not talking about a man. You're talking about that which was in the beginning that became flesh. You're talking about him who, although we have seen, many people have seen him 2,000 years ago, even today people are seeing him. Yet Paul says about him uh, in his epistle to um, Timothy, no one has seen him. 
how is this possible that the person that is seen is not seen? How is that possible? Or easily, because this person is not the same person. Or let me say, what we saw on earth is not the fulfillment of what we call the Jesus, Jesus Christ. There is more into this. And it says those things would not open up unless if you begin to see everything that was said in the old is about him. Didn't he say all things, everything in the law and the prophets was written, was written about him? But didn't he also use the word psalm? That everything that was in the law, in the prophets and in psalms, he specifically uses the word psalm, was written about him? Yes. Now, what does that mean? Let me show you uh, one example. I mean, the famous um, psalm, psalm chapter 23, um, would do for now. Look at psalm chapter 23. People read, the Lord is my shepherd. And I would say most people, when they say the Lord is my shepherd, they're not thinking Jesus. They're thinking God. I mean, you can be honest with yourself and say, how many times when I read this, I, I, I looked at the Lord as Jesus. Didn't you look at this and you said, this is the Father, this is, not even consciously, you, you read it and it's like God, right? So Jesus is different, this is God. Now, that's the problem. That's what the Old Testament people also did, um, or basically the people of the Old Testament in the time of Jesus, those who were of Moses, they read all these things. They didn't see they were talking about Jesus. And instead of becoming full of joy, filled with spirit, they were dry and, you know, sad, <laughs> you see, and Pharisees. So the Lord is my shepherd. Now we come to the New Testament and you suddenly see Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Peter says, now we have returned to the shepherd of our soul. We read about him that he is the Lord Jesus Christ. So when I say the Lord is my shepherd, who am I talking about? Well, this is Jesus. And realizing things like this are... Or let me say this, allowing these words in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and reading these things in the name of Jesus Christ, meaning instead of saying the Lord is my shepherd, that you would say Jesus is my shepherd or the Lord Jesus Christ is my shepherd. These things are those touches in your heart that would cause your heart to vibrate, okay, and a joyous sound would come out. And you would be filled with the sound of that voice. Let me show you something what Isaiah says quickly so you don't lose the thoughts. Look at Isaiah chapter 12, uh, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. Do you know what the word salvation means? Or mean? This word salvation is literally the word Yeshua, Jesus. So, I mean, when Jesus came on scene, it wasn't like a unknown name. That name was repeated over and over. And it was always said, this God is Jesus, is salvation. Jesus is salvation. Okay, now he says, I will trust and not be afraid for Yah the Lord is my strength. Listen, and song. <laughs> this is just so amazing. He is my song. He is my song. Who are we talking about? Jesus. Didn't Paul say, be filled with this, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with um, spirit speaking uh, to one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in your heart. Uh, and he also said uh, to God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ, well, oh, here we see that suddenly he is the song that is being sung. So, there is a heart with strings, 
a voice would come out, a touch would that cause that to come. A, a touch would touch my heart, vibration would happen, and a sound, a song would come out. The song that would come out is Jesus. And what is causing this, what is touching my heart is these words. In the name of Jesus being read, that would cause your heart to express the only thing that the heart can express. Enjoy. It's Jesus. Now listen. It says, uh, He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy will, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Therefore, with joy. Okay, this is the experience of the feeling of the Spirit. You can't possibly be filled with the Spirit and not have joy. It's impossible. It's impossible. In fact, we read in the Spirit, Paul says, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, in the Spirit. The kingdom of God is joy in the Spirit. That's just amazing. So as a new man, we are told not to be carrying the cares, but to be casting them upon him. And he says, this is how you do it. One of the ways that you can do this, you can begin to sing psalms to him. You can take scriptures and find Jesus in them and sing them to the Lord. You can, uh, I mean, I showed you, you can go and read Psalm chapter 23. Suddenly you see all those Things that were said about God in the Old Testament that were so far that even some people would look at them as like Yahweh and he's a distant God, he's far. Even you see pictures that you don't want to see usually in the Old Testament. But when you suddenly come to Jesus, everything changes. Do You see, and Jesus says, well, what I'm showing you is something you had not seen before. No one has ever seen God. I'm the only one that can make him known. How do you make him known? You look at me. <laughs> if you've seen me, you've seen him. But no one who came before me, he says, brought this revelation to you. So for me, I mean, this has been the case from the beginning that um, my revelation of who Jesus is, or basically my revelation of the scriptures that has revealed Jesus to me, has been responsible for me becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. Why? Because I suddenly see him as all that the scriptures have been talking about and I'm free from everything that is there. I thought those were instructions for me to how to live, but I see they were revealing him and he is revealing who I am. That's how it works. So this is how you're being filled with the scriptures, filled with uh, um, basically spirit. Let me just continue read a couple more verses in chapter 12 of Isaiah. Um, and in that day you will say, praise the Lord, call upon his name. Now, which Lord is he? That it says, praise the Lord, call upon his name. Doesn't Paul say in Romans chapter 10, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved? But in that context, it says, whoever says Jesus is Lord. Or in Philippians says, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. See how amazing this is. So anyways, it says, in that day, you will say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his deeds among the people. What is his deeds? His work. What is his work? What he did. What did he do? Oh, he did something marvelous. What was that? He gave us, he laid down his life. And through that, he now by the Spirit is helping us to see ourselves one with him in everything that he went through. So we rely on his works, not our works. And by doing so, I find rest. My soul finds rest. And my soul begins to sing to him. Why? Because I'm recognizing he has done it. That's amazing. So make mention that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known to all the earth. Cry out and shout, O inhabitants of Zion. This is us, inhabitants 
of Zion. This is us who Jesus said, you will be a city set on a hill. We are on this mountain, Mount Zion. We have come to this mountain. So he says, now you cry out. What are we going to cry out? Why are we going to cry out? For great is the Holy One of Israel in your midst. See, he's been in our midst and we have been drunk with cares. And he says, don't you want to do this? Like um, Jesus himself actually uh, before on the night that uh, before being arrested, going for crucifixion, he was with his disciples and he says he, he sang a song and then he left. Okay, I think this is, I mean, we read this also about um, Saul, basically um, Paul in prison, doing that and suddenly being in prison, suddenly after his praise, his songs that he's uh, singing, uh, the door is open, the chains are gone and all those things. Why? Because he is in our midst. He's with us. Okay, and just becoming more aware of him makes a difference and how do you do this i said this i mean i didn't paul said speaking to one another uh, in psalms uh, and hymns and spiritual songs and making melody in your heart uh, to god the father in the name of the lord jesus christ take the psalms he said everything was about me take the psalms wherever the word lord is mentioned and just replace it with Jesus and see what happens and read it. And you'll see revelation would come. People say sometimes, how do I see Jesus in the scriptures? I mean, some, one of the easiest way to do it is just replace the word Lord with Jesus. And you'll see suddenly the scriptures would just open up like a popcorn, one after the other. Why? Because you suddenly got the key that disciples struggle for three and a half years to get which is everything that was written about was about him he said this often and it's like guys don't you want to understand the scriptures i mean that wasn't the point but it's like you want to understand the bible this is the course that jesus would have given us everything is about me now go and read it <laughs> that would be a key that would unlock all the scriptures but uh, i truly want all of us to experience this i th i think we have not emphasized on jesus enough we have not uh, focused on Jesus. You know, we, we talk about God and the Father, and usually he's a different person than who Jesus is. Now, I'm not saying again, what you see 2,000 years ago in the scriptures, that's the fullness of God. No, that was a part of the revelation of who God is, and that is basically a part of revelation of who Jesus Christ is. That was a self-expression of God from a seed form to the fullness of who he is now we are coming to that fullness we had not seen him like paul says even christ we don't regard him anymore after the flesh once we regarded him that way we said oh this is the son of god this is you know mary's son uh, born of him but also um, he was the son of god and all of that but you're coming to realize that that what Paul said, what Isaiah also said, that that son was a child, but that son is also the everlasting father. So that revelation, those are the things that would make you be filled with the Spirit. Okay, I would leave it there. Uh, today, I'm not beyond my time. I'm happy. Okay, bless you guys. I uh, pray that you would be filled with joy and with so much strength because of that joy. And I will see you next week.